I don't want to pan that way because this isn't as good as it gets. to seeing through glass welcome to Chicago now I realize that we've sort of covered quite a lot of ground in a very short time the last few weeks we've kind of been skipping through America quite quickly there is a reason for that and I will get into it a little bit later but here in Chicago there are some amazing things lined up for me to film I'll be honest it's quite Ferrari heavy we got a, we got a few days of a lot of Ferrari content but you know me I'm, I'm never gonna complain about that Well, welcome to Continental Autosports. This is the second oldest Ferrari dealership in America and probably the only Ferrari dealership with three master technicians, the only technicians allowed to carry out Ferrari Classic A work, which basically is the sort of approved classic and vintage Ferrari program. These guys are not messing around, but whilst they are one of the best in the business, and I mentioned that Chicago was providing a lot of Ferrari themed content, I'm not actually here to film or drive a Ferrari. I'm actually here to check out that Alfa Romeo GTV. I think you can just about see it in the back of the shop. But before we take it out onto the road, I'm gonna do a quick spin around of this place because some of the cars they have in stock or lying around in the service department are frankly ridiculous. You, you need to see this. I wanna start up something new. I wanna see things I have never seen before. I'm tired of these city streets. I would go anywhere. Check out the spec on this Speciale. At first, I thought it was a Speciale Aperta because it has the stripe from the Aperta, but it's not. It's a standard Speciale Coupe, but standard is really an understatement because we have this kind of like satin white, satin pearlescent white finish. God knows if that's paint or a wrap. Also, white-ish wheels. They look a little bit offset in color. I'm assuming they are color matched to the paint, but in real life, they look a little bit offset. Then you have these blue side stripes, fade side stripes carbon fiber on the sort of side sill but then not at the front the thing is just mad but awesome because I think anytime you see a sort of quirky specced speciale you've got to give it a thumbs up ah everybody welcome Joel yeah. to the channel <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you so much for uh, being here yeah for, for having me down and for also welcoming me into your car well it's my pleasure to welcome you into my somewhat new car well you it's know, stunning my, my new old car your new old <laughs> car because this has been kind of fully restored prior to you purchasing it and since right uh, before and since yeah cosmetically what you see is how it arrived to me which is a gorgeous restoration um, really fine and uh, unfortunately, the internals were not quite as good as we hoped when we bought it off of a uh, ring of trailers. So, sure. Um, and a lot of motor work and uh, suspension work by a local expert. Okay. And I received it back just this past Friday. Amazing. So uh, now I'm putting, I'm trying to battle test it because I'm hoping to go on a rally with it later today. Or Too later cool. This, later this season. So. Well, however I can help. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we are now just going to start up the car and we're going to be headed off to your warehouse, right? Correct. So yeah, let, let her rip and then we'll have yeah. a little chat on the right. on the way there. I nearly said our oh, classic Alfa Romeo. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> This is a mix of cars that you have on, on sale, cars you just keep in storage. Most of them are for sale or in the process of being sold. Um, you know, some of these are consignment cars. Okay. Like this uh, 99 Zanardi here. 
is uh, car for one of our Ferrari clients that he's pulling out of his collection. He wants us to uh, market it for him. Nice. So that's the Acura NSX, which was the Alex Zanardi yeah, special edition. So one super of 50, rare. One of 50 right there. Wow. And did they do anything more than, was it like a cosmetic upgrade? No, it was a, a lightweight version. So they, they actually, there's no power steering in the car. Um, and it had basically like kind of the upgraded Gen 2 motor in the Gen 1 body. Oh, nice. So it's kind of a little mix of, yeah. of both. For those of you that, some of you might know Alex Zanotti, I guess from his Paralympic glory, but he used to, well, he was very successful in kart or, or indie car racing. I can't remember what it would have been yeah, called back then, back then, but it was yeah, kart was. back then. So open wheel American racing made his move over to F1 a couple of times and uh, not as successfully. But yeah, this was a, a very rare special edition NSX. That's awesome to see. It's a neat car. Really cool. Um, this is my dad's personal race car here. This is a 1965 Lotus 23B. Um, could be probably the most winningest Lotus 23 in the world. Wow. Uh, has a, a lot of history back in the mid 60s. It won the USRRC National Championship a couple times. And then uh, my dad purchased the car and raced it successfully from uh, about 1989 to just recently. He retired his racing career at the age of 84. <laughs> what and, a legend. <laughs> uh, um, so this car has many, many wins. It tracks around here like Road America and. and uh, um, it's been down to Sebring and a lot of different places. It's just Super a fantastic. Cool. I've driven it a number of times as well. You know, I'm almost at the point where I don't want to race it because it's so fast and I don't feel completely safe in it. Sure, frankly, but, I uh, can imagine. I can um, only it's imagine. It's really a wicked car. Wow. what were your first car was? My very first car that I purchased for myself was a 1971 Datsun 240Z. Ooh, nice, yeah. okay. Yeah, that was so you fun. were sort of straight into like good, decent driving cars from day one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, it was Datsun was uh, in our business portfolio at that time. Okay. My brother's about eight years older than I am, so he was actually okay. working, he'd been working in the company for a while, and his company car was a 280ZX. Okay. And uh, so I'm like 16 years old, and I sure. I asked my dad. I said, Hey, how about a 280ZX for me? Yeah. You know? <laughs> show me a little love, you know? Yeah, come on. And uh, he's like, No way, you know. <laughs> so I decided I'll show you. So I went out and I bought my own 240Z. Nice. Which was faster than my brother's 280ZX. I love it. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Well, look, the reason I wanted to pick this car for today is obviously it's beautiful. I don't want you to have the chance to show it off to me, but also because. My audience have been asking me recently what happened to my like plan to buy a classic. Because like two years ago I started this whole series of like buying my first classic. And that went away. But during this year, I have once again fallen in love with this kind of era of car. Because the more modern day like supercars that I am around, the more they like blur together and that's a really harsh thing to say but like yeah. in the dealership for example I would have picked that 275 GTB or the 330 right. over a 488 any day of the week well I think the older cars are just more engaging you know they're not the great thing is they're not perfect they're but not perfect cars, whether it's Ferrari <laughs> McLaren Porsche whatever they're basically all kind of perfect right so it's actually interesting to drive something imperfect that you can it, it quirky. I love the quirkiness. Of quirky is the perfect thing. Particularly the Italian side is really quirky. When it can sound as good as this thing sounds. <laughs> yep. <laughs> On cue. Well, and actually, Ooh. I think you get more. You tend to get more looks in cars like this if you're. I'm not that I'm looking for attention, but it's fun to show off something like this that you're not going to see every day. You know, and as nice as a Ferrari or a Porsche are, you know see that same car a lot of you know unless it's some truly special and rare and I feel like you get a different kind of look like you know sure. in a yeah. modern day Ferrari people yeah. look a little bit different to something like this but Alfa Romeo is always kind of been like that heralded mark it's like you know true driver's car here we go but also a kind of relatively attainable or affordable For sure. classic and we were speaking off camera earlier and you were saying that as long as you find a car that you know the history you kind of know what you're getting into. It's not always as disastrous as Jeremy Clarkson made out. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, I think that the biggest challenge is actually finding um, qualified people to work on these cars. Okay. Because it's kind of a, you know, a knowledge base that is not necessarily being handed down through the generations. And so, 
there's a few, you know, in Chicago, there's probably three Alpha experts. I've used all three of them on okay. different cars. Okay. Um, they're all very nice guys. They're all good at their job. But my fear is that when they've timed out, you know, who's going to carry the torch after that? Sure. That's um, always the question. Because when this car needs help, you know, I'm not qualified to work on it. I don't know anything about Weber carburetors, and it's hard to find people that do. Well, the appeal for me is always for the Italian, and so... Yes, I think we should start talking and enjoy this beast because oh, this thing is so cool! Well, what an absolute legend Joel is. I really want an Alpha GTV. Uh, right now, I'm gonna pull in and get some fuel, and then we're actually headed to another Ferrari dealership, Ferrari Lake Forest, um, because apparently they have some pretty nuts hypercars lurking around. So, anyway, yes, let me fuel up, and then we'll be moving on to the next dealership. A few minutes later. You are not ready for this. Okay, sneak peek. I just had a quick look around the Ferrari Lake Forest dealership, and Oh my God, even if you're not a fan of Ferrari, stay tuned because what you are about to see is potentially one of the greatest dealership showrooms in the world. I'm starting big because why not go big or go home? I've come straight to what they're sort of calling the supercar row here at Ferrari Lake Forest. I don't want to pan that way because this isn't as good as it gets. It gets more ridiculous as we work along the line. But anyway, kicking things off with, yes, Ferrari LaFerrari Aperta, the convertible Targa top open air roofed version of the LaFerrari Coupe, <laughs> very helpful to have this right next door. So two insane modern day V12 Ferrari hypercars. Next to them, yes, it's a Sergio. Earlier this year, well, back in LA at the beginning of the US leg of Drive the World, when I saw my first ever 458 Sergio, I don't think I'd ever see one again. But no, just a few months later, here we are with a stunning red car with gold wheels. So just to cover this off one more time, this is based on the 458 Speciale, but entirely rebodied by Pinon Farina. I think six or seven cars in the world. Um, and I've now seen two. Um, so <laughs> fairly ridiculous. And as I say, when they're when it's flanked by a Lafra Ferrari Aperta and a LaFerrari Coupe, things don't get much better, but oh wait, they do, um, because we have two, yes, two F12 TDFs. The paint, yes, paint on this car is a kind of satin silver, $30,000 paint job on that thing, unreal. Now, what I would say is the sad news about these two cars is they are both actually delivery mileage. Um, so yes, I, I see that as a sad thing, but it does make them incredibly valuable. Uh, I prefer the spec, I think. Oh, do I prefer the spec? I'm not sure. Comment below, which do you prefer? This kind of satin silver or the white pearlescent? Both incredible though. Got some red details in this car as well. Um, but yeah, as a Ferrari lineup goes, two insanely spec and delivery mileage TDFs, a Sergio and two LaFerrari is pretty mind-blowing. And then it goes up a whole nother level because yes, people, we got hypercars. Uh, we have got a beautiful all clear carbon Pagani Huayra Roadster, no, Coupe, just double checking that there. Um, but this thing, absolutely amazing. Got some really nice details on it. Full tan leather interior, that kind of orange stripe going down the center. Beautiful to see. And next to it, two ridiculous Koenigseggs. Now, I am bad with my Koenigsegg knowledge, but I do know that that's a Regera. And there are so few Regeras in the world, but they are starting to pop up here and there now. Um, this one, sort of completely clear carbon again, uh, just like the Pagani next to it. Um, except it's got that sort of red stripe, that center 
windscreen wiper which is so iconic for Koenigsegg and these things just blow me away. I think much more beautiful than the Agera that's next to it. This is the 1-1 one, one, um, Koenigsegg 1-1 one one, uh, which was all to do with the power to weight ratio of this car which was frankly ridiculous. One horsepower to one kilogram. Um, absolutely mad. Look at that wing just hanging off the back there. But yes there we go as I say starting strong down here at Ferrari Lake Forest with two Koenigseggs, a Pagani and some of the best modern day Ferraris you can imagine. Let's continue. This isn't the last race car you're going to see on today's tour, but it is potentially the rarest. You are looking at a 308 GT2. I had never seen one of these before in my life. A Michelotto car. Uh, obviously, Michelotto famous for also making the 308 rally car, but this is a track focused animal and when i say animal just look i mean look how wide those rear wheels are those rear tires that's insane and you dive inside and you've got that single driver's seat that white gear knob the thing just looks absolutely mad you can actually see kind of into that front bumper there but i'm obsessed apparently it's a monster to drive and that makes total sense but yeah very very cool to see this bit of a bit of a retro animal right there now, like any Ferrari dealership, these guys have got a lovely atelier where you can come down and spec your car. For a little bit of inspiration, they've got a 599 SA Aperta and a Pista. <laughs> I mean, and just two beautifully specced cars. So I say, if you're looking for inspiration, these two are pretty damn good. This 599 Aperta, so rare. So just as a reminder, it was the convertible version of the 599, which took a lot of the parts from the GTO. So it wasn't as hardcore, wasn't as racy as the 599 GTO, but it was definitely a step up from the standard 599. And of course, you could take the roof down. So a truly special, special thing and less than 100 made. So incredibly rare to see and then obviously pistas unfortunately becoming a little bit common but in that spec it is looking fantastic that could be a rosso froco for you ferrari nerds a triple layered red paint but yeah this could potentially be my favorite two car lineup in the dealership you thought the showroom was good well check out the service department we've got yes Another LaFerrari, a 550 Barchetto in yellow. Super intrigued by these cars. I would be very keen to have a go in one at some point. I was never a big 550 fan, but something about Barchetto I think is looking better and better with age. And then a really nicely specced, in my opinion, F12 TDF with what looks like blue carbon. I can't get that close, but if I just come down here, yes, you can see blue carbon unreal with that tan interior yeah so these three big fan of now this is a working environment so i have to be a little bit respectful of the technicians but also privacy because there's a lot of customer cars in here so i can't really pan around too much but who cares because yes there's another regera <laughs> that one has red carbon you can't really see it from all the way back here but i've got a, a yellow line that i'm i'm not supposed to cross um so i've got to film it from back here but yes two regeras in one showroom outrageous uh, also got this very nice pista parked up here on the alignment machine um, but yes i can't can't i'm gonna have to do a lot of a lot of b-roll in here because of the uh, the privacy with the plates yes yes that is an actual fxx <laughs> the track only ferrari programmed version of the enzo absolutely outrageous to have it here can't drive on the road they a few people i think did make some sort of road legal versions but as you can see it has no actual wing mirrors but this is one of the best sounding cars ever produced that hunk and great v12 with those exhaust pipes that come out where the actual tail lights do for the standard road car unbelievable i can't believe this is here i told you you weren't ready for that i wasn't ready for that I mean, all the back and forth about whether I want a classic, I just want a Ferrari. I mean, that's what it boils down to. I want another Ferrari. Oh, why can't I have more money? Why can't I be richer? Why can't I be shmi? <laughs> I feel like everyone else in the world at the minute is buying Ferraris except me, and they're just the things I love the most. Maybe, maybe I can combine the two. I mean, the 360 was like my modern classic and still a Ferrari. What if I got like a... Like a 308 rally car. Then I'm like ticking so many boxes. But then there's a part of me that wants pistas and 550 barquettas and ah. Oh. 
It's just all so lovely. Anyway, huge thanks to Ferrari Lake Forest for showing me around and letting me film, but also big thanks to Joel and the Continental Autosports. Two very different dealerships, I would say. Uh, I feel like here they're more on the sort of the new, exotic, and just in terms of like numbers, like they're churning cars here. Whilst Joel and Continental Allsports almost felt like an Italian Ferrari dealership. It felt more family, they were into their classic K kind of vintage classics, a more, dare I say it, personalized touch. But here they were super friendly. So anyway, you're spoiled for choice if you're in this part of America and you want a Ferrari. Um, all it's done is just, yeah, make me very sad as a human being. But that is the end of today's video, the end of my day. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up if you have, and make sure you subscribe for plenty more videos to come.